Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus. Early this morning, it's about 4.17, just the right hour to be able to speak to you. What I'd like to share with you this morning is that the world is the snake. The world is the snake. I was reminded by watching television that there was a mega preacher, many of you might have watched it, uh, pastor, should I say, of a mega church. And uh, he was rebuking his congregation and all Christians who are excited about the fact that Donald Trump is selling the Bible as he's added additional information, like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and a song about American, about America. And many people are really, really excited about it, white people. And he is rebuking them because the two does not go together. And he thought it was blasphemous that people should be thinking like this. But the reality of it is that people are, are thinking like this. In fact, there's a 17-year-old boy, you might be able to pull up on the internet, who is actually, actually rebuking the Republican Party to their face about how hypocritical they are about how far on the wrong track they are. And this, my friends, is a kid. So it tells me that the power of God, the Spirit, is using young white boys, young white children, to understand the truth based upon what they see in their daily lives and be bold enough to stand up and say what these adults won't say because the adults have found peace in their living. But I want to share this with you. It's a poem, and this poem is not my poem, but it's the poem that is behind the song. It's called The Snake. On her way to work one morning, down the path alongside the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried. I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. She wrapped him up all cozy in a coverture of silk and then laid him by the fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night and as soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake that she had taken in had been revived. She clustered him, should I say, she clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in, you know, by now you might have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and then kissed and hugged him tight. But instead of saying thanks, the snakes gave her a vicious bite. I saved you, she cried, but you bit me. But why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, he grinned. You knew darn well I was a snake before you took me in. You see, that's when you're trying to ignore the truth. Ignore the truth and you will get bitten. Now, I'm here in America and I heard an American president say the other day just speaking on law and order. And he said that the people who protest, they have the right to protest, but it must be peaceful protest or it will require law to adjust. Now, what do they say law? They're talking about law of force. They're talking about law of being arrested, law of being fined, and in many instances being beaten while you're being arrested. We know this is true. We see it all the time. In fact, we see it every day. But what is protest supposed to be about? Protest is about the failures of the system. Protest is the statement to the people and to all concerned that what is happening is not sufficient enough. It is causing me this and that. But not only is it telling you what it's doing, 
is calling you out to fix the problem. And any good law, any just law would say, oh, we didn't know that, sorry, that happened, so let's go back to the table and find out how to fix that. But no, you must be beat down. It's like telling a few years ago that protest was okay, just put it in the backyard where nobody will see it. In other words, it's saying that we're not concerned about your problems, they're yours, not ours. Well, here's what I understand, ladies and gentlemen. All people, all people want a satisfied life. Every one. They want the best of life. People of color, as well as people, as well as whites, Palestinians, as well as Jews, Americans, as well as anyone else. This, my friends, is what I bring to you, is that we walk into this world, you know it, we are taught by what we see, what we hear, and what we read. And what we do after that is respond to that. And so what we have learned in that is to be selfish through the education system, through careers, through health care, through the system itself. It brings out the best of us and the worst of us. The best of us who have that privilege and the worst of us who do not. In other words, it causes pain and suffering. The snake does. This world we live in, it causes pain. It causes suffering. But people buy into it because for some strange reason, some it works for. And again, many it doesn't. And so when you see that people are not being satisfied, you see the protest. You see the poverty that is created out of an unfair system. You see the pain. You see the suffering. You see the crime. You experience the violence. Yes, my friends, because you are denied the basic essentials of life that everybody wants, every individual wants. But the system tells you that you can't have it. You have to be special to get it. You have to be privileged. You must do certain things to get it. In show business, most of the time, that is a career that uh, pays a lot of money. Entertainment, sports, uh, acting, dancing, music, any form. And it pays a lot of money. But to get in there, you think your talent would get you there? Not necessarily. It is what you're willing to do, how you're willing to bend, how you're willing to change your nature just to accommodate someone else so they can benefit at abusing and using you. That's the system. That's that snake that is using money to lure you in. And you've had many people who do despicable things, things that I refuse to mentioned here on this video because I've mentioned it so many times other places. But what the snake wants you to know is to ignore the family life, to ignore the oneness that you are to one another. That with one man and one woman, all of the black people on earth exist. All of the white people on earth exist. All of the Asian people on earth exist. All of the African people exist, and people everywhere exist, but they exist by a true mother. They exist by a true father that you can only see by the evidence of stuff existing, which you your, yourselves had nothing to do with causing a manifestation thereof, which should be sufficient enough to let you know that there is truth outside of what you can put your eyes on should be sufficient enough, but for some strange reason, it is not. And so you will find people learning how to compete against one another, learn how to compete against anything that would deny them the blessings. That's what we call winners and losers. And yet, we 
pursue this, even though the loser has to suffer and the suffering at your hands. But you say he had an opportunity, she had an opportunity to just be successful as I am, which is not true, but the system tells you it does. That's the snake. But what is the snake really trying to do? The snake is trying to rob you of your soul because all you want is what the system says is available to you, that which God has proven, has given to you, but the system has stolen and taken control. And while you might have all of the wonderful things of life to live that life as though you are in heaven, now you have to compete and run according to the dictates of the system. And when you are not satisfied and you decide to come together as a group for whatever reason, it might be going on a strike it, because you're dissatisfied with the prices, uh, with your pay. You go and protest because there's some uh, inconvenience that some people are going through that you do not support. And you stand up together for that particular idea. And you have many, but you, for instance, we have Me Too movement. We have the 99 percenters. You would think that the 99 percenters was an opportunity for people to come together and say, this is to correct the system that causes pain to all of us. In other words, this is to call a snake out and tell the snake that the snake has lost its power because we have regained it. But that doesn't happen because people, even in those situations where people say they have a relationship with that ultimate power, that ultimate power is there for one thing is to help them. That's why you can go to a church with, a, with many mega preachers and prosperity preachers and purchase your freedom from God, purchase a blessing from God. You want this, you want that, give God some money. God, see, that's the trick now that the snake uses. But my friends, life is bigger than the snake. And we have one individual that many Christians, and I'm sure many other uh, religious organizations, if you can call them that, uh, ascribe to as well. And that is that all of the stuff that God has given and provided for the earth and the people on the earth is given so that they can exercise the gifts that they bring to the earth, participate in the process of creating all of the things that they have determined is absolutely important to them in such an abundance that every last one of them can have their needs, their wants, and their desires met when they choose. But the snake says, no way, Jose. And what happens? You have war, you have hatred, you have bigotry, you have racism, and all of these things to indicate the failure of the system. But when you stand up to protest, and when you protest, and when you get disorderly, what happens? The monster comes down, the stick comes down, the beating comes down. But when you protest orderly, what happens? Nothing. Do you get what you're fighting for, protesting for? No, you ignore it. So there's a time for peaceful protest. That's just to let the system know, to let the snake know that it has failed. And when it ignores you, it is calling upon you to do whatever is required to get the type of movement that you require. And beat down is nothing but what the snake really is. It's the bite of the snake. And you say, but you are capitalism. You are socialism. You are an authoritarian and dictatorship. So why does this happen? Because it has failed. And like the 17-year-old boy who's calling Republicans out to their face, the Spirit of God is calling you out to your face. Because the example that was given by Jesus Christ whether it's true or whether it's a story or someone's imagination, it is the answer that we all pray, crave and pray for. And that is that our needs, our wants, and our desires are met. That we suffer for nothing that is essential for life, food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation, and anything that might be imagined by the hands of man that they create and cause the manifestation thereof. But the snake, my friend, is there. 
and to say that we're going to bring out the law and do all the things that the law does except fix the problem. It's the bite of the snake. And what happens? You bought into it. And rather than living on earth as you are in heaven, you're living in hell. Why? You didn't respect the snake. Thank you.